So, hello. <laughs> All right, this is episode number one of the Daily Push podcast. Uh, I'm here with Seb, a legend in the game. My, my name's Matt. I'm the founder of the Daily Push, which is a website related to just like pushing health and performance related stuff in the, in the skate world. I met Seb like a couple of years ago. Uh, he reached out to me when I was doing some articles in the barracks and uh, wanted to contribute. He actually wrote the first exercise program that is up on the Daily Push. And yeah, we basically come together to start doing this podcast, which is going to be covering shitloads of different topics related to things like health and performance, nutrition, everything that you can think of that's basically going to enhance how you're skating and all like completely uncovered, untouched stuff that hasn't really been spoken about before in the skate world. So, yeah, we're going to be That's talking about him here. <laughs> so, yeah, Seb, tell us a little bit about yeah, so, who are you? Sebastian. I, uh, I'm right now currently living in Phoenix, Arizona in the U.S. Um, a lot of my schooling and my professional experience is in exercise and performance relating to athletics and nutrition and exercise. Um, I grew up skateboarding in New Jersey, and once I got to college, I kind of went more into the exercise field and less paid less attention to skateboarding. But that was when I stumbled upon your Matt's website, The Daily Push, and I was like, this is the most amazing thing I've ever seen. This is the first time that I've really seen like performance information paired with skateboarding and in that context and i was like this is perfect this is exactly what i'm looking for so 100 percent, i had to reach out and we started to make shit happen and started to throw around some ideas and this podcast was one of those things where this information i feel like and we both feel like is so useful for skateboarders and just so it's so useful for anybody but it hasn't really been put in a way that skateboarders can even like really use practically in their day-to-day -day. and so i think that's kind of why we're doing this. And I think that's why that's where the value is. It's going to be sick to be able to get so much of this information out because it's so useful and athletes have been using it for so long. And now to be able to get it into skateboarding is going to be some huge, very that's excited. Exactly. exactly. We're going to be covering like so much stuff that like already is being used by pretty much every single other sport, every single other kind of professional athlete, but it's just like for some reason hasn't been brought over to skating. So we're like, yeah, going to try and bring that information to skating. But in a way, like we obviously, we both skate, we understand skating. So we're going to try and break it down in a way where it's just like easy to understand and apply to skating without having to change really even much about like how you skate and, and how you go about your life kind of thing. We're going to make it easily accessible. 100%. That's, I think that's a huge point to start off with is not right off the bat. I feel like a lot of times, especially with skateboarders, they hear words like programming and planning and organizing and like having to like and they think they have to change what they're doing or skate less or do anything like that and that's definitely not the idea here the idea here is all of these stuff are, all of these things are designed to enhance what you're already doing get you to actually skate more get more out of your sessions get more quality sessions and that's kind of the value in all this stuff is getting your body to feel the best it possibly can every single day so that you can get the best possible sessions every single day there we go there we go so yeah, today, but well, episode number one, we're gonna be going over something called programming, which is applied in all areas, all sports, like all athletes use, use this. And in reality, like skaters are actually already doing this kind of stuff. But yeah, maybe they're not even aware that they're actually doing it. 100%. And it's like, basically, in, in my mind, the way that I look at it kind of from like the exercise and, and science standpoint is, Programming is basically anything that you do, any plan that you do relating to skateboarding or recovery or performance, anything that has to do with your body and skateboarding. Like for example, say your body's feeling good and you're like, you wake up and you're like, all right, cool, I'm gonna crush a heavy session. That's programming. On the, on the other end of it, say you're, you wake up and you're like, damn, I'm pretty beat up and I feel like shit. I'm probably gonna either rest or take it super light today. That same thing is programming. That's it. It's pretty much just just planning and changing kind of any aspect of pretty much anything related to skating and recovery and stuff like that. And I would say like this is probably one of the most important things that like skaters should learn and probably 
one of the reasons why like so many skaters have like so many aches and pains and low energy and things like this because they just don't understand like the the simple kind of concepts of programming so even but so like it might sound a little bit kind of strange to be maybe planning things related to your skating but as you as we're going to explain like it's not going to necessarily revo like include having to change so much related to your skating and and the whole point of this is like i've already said to like help you skate more and to skate better yeah percent. and so like before and so like i think this would be a good time to kind of give an example of what we're talking about before you even learned about programming like what if you could think of like what are some of the ways that you were already doing it in your own skating and in your life you can think yeah. of yeah exactly so so for me that would have been literally just planning to to go skate on different days throughout the week or for example when when i'd be at school back at school like the weekends would always be like the time for like the heavy missions you know like full-on like full day street missions so i would always like have that in my head like that was the kind of the plan for the week you know it'll be like skating throughout the week after school and then weekends like heavy mission so 100 percent. and so like and that's like the perfect segue because like you said everybody's going to be at some point in their week and maybe it's more more times than, than others they're going to be having some type of heavy session where they're probably skating all day they're skating with their buddies um and so knowing that knowing when that week starts, when those days are gonna be, you can start to use this idea of programming to plan out your other days so you can get the most out of the days that are the most important to you. So the, the sessions that are gonna be the heaviest where you're skating all day or you're gonna be taking heavy slams, or you're gonna be trying new tricks and stuff like that, those, your body's gonna treat that as a higher stressor than say, you know, you're just going out and you're doing some flat ground tricks, you're hitting a ledge for you know like an hour and a half or 90 minutes and so knowing this kind of stuff helps you plan your week so you can get the most quality skating done with the least wear and tear that's it and so you can be like better prepared for that like heavier session though which is maybe more important for you if you want to go out and like film or something like that in the streets like you want to make sure that you're as like fresh as possible like for that for that session so this is that's like another way how this how programming can basically help you with uh with that like making sure you're on point when you want to be on point kind of thing 100 percent, and because and nobody i mean maybe some people are but most people aren't going to be going on like i say a seven day basis going five heavy heavy sessions it's just like the body's just not going to be able to do that so like being able to say okay i know that on saturday i want to do a heavy session and maybe on wednesday i want to do a heavy session now you get to plan the rest of your week out just based on those two days and it makes it 10 times easier and you're already most people are already doing that this just puts it in a more let's call it formal way yeah totally when we're younger and like we're skating when we're younger you don't you can often just go out and just skate every day like no worries wake up feeling absolutely fresh like you can go out and just like get wasted every night and like <laughs> every night when you're a kid like you can get wasted at the weekend and wake up the next day at like 9 a.m and feel like absolutely fresh you know when you're younger your body can just like handle more things and it doesn't really like that fatigue doesn't like accumulate at all you know so i think the reason why we don't maybe like consider these things related to programming when we're when we're older is because we think we didn't do it when we we're younger so why do we need to do anything different when we're when we're older but that's as i'm sure like most guys that are listening to this that are over the age of like 22 know that their body's probably feeling different to when they were younger. Like, like I said before as well, like so many skaters complain about like aches and pains and like low energy levels and shit like that. Your body's different to when you were younger, you know? So Seb, why should we, uh, why should you program? How can it enhance your skating? Well, and I think to even to go back to what you just said, like that's such an important point that we kind of get like lulled to sleep when we're young. Cause like I said, we feel like we can do anything and it is kind of true. The body can't handle so much but we are accumulating fatigue over that time and, and doing damage, so to say, um, just like small amounts over time. If, if it doesn't get you know, taken care of, it could do something. Um, but like you said, once it, it's at some point, it catches up and all skaters, I mean, and all athletes, they're doing what they do because they love it and they want to do it forever. They want to do it for their whole lives and they want to do it at a, at a, a comfortable level and a quality level for their entire lives. And that's what 
all of this stuff is, and that's leads into kind of why we're programming is it's not to get you to skate less. It's actually to get you to skate more and actually get your body to be more conditioned to handle more skating over time so that you can enhance your longevity and that you can have a strong body that can skate for your entire life. That's yeah. the, like the main point of all of this stuff is getting you the strongest body possible so that you can keep doing what you love basically forever. That's it. It's like, it's like what Nane Williams always says, you know, like he always says that the things that he does is always just so he can like skate forever. No, he's like, Oh, I just want to skate forever. And that's why he takes care of himself. That's why he like eats good and all this kind of stuff. So, so yeah, don't, don't think that we're trying to suggest that you have to skate less. All right. This is about like helping you to skate more and more and into the future as well. Right. So that's, so that's one of the main things. Yeah. Is that it's going to help us with longevity. Right. So it's going to help, help us to skate more. And, uh, and as well, it's essential for, it's not just about longevity as well. It's essential for like progression too, isn't it? So how does progression come into the game? Like how can programming help us with progression? So that's a great, I mean, that's a great question. And so there's, I feel like there's two types of, there's kind of two different ways of looking at it. There's going to be people and skaters, just like athletes who like are looking at skateboarding as they want to get at the best they possibly can. They want to master the skill the best they possibly can. And so like programming is going to help, right? Exactly, exactly. And programming is going to help them really dial in like high days, low days, and making sure their body is working on a, on a schedule and they're, when their body's ready to go, they're hitting their heavy days. And when the body needs rest, they're, get, they're getting in the rest. But the other piece is, say you're just like, you just want to improve skating and you're just skating because you enjoy it and you just want to, like, like we talked about, skate for life. Being able to actually do that and have a body that doesn't have to take breaks because it's hurt, you, no matter what, you're going to progress because you're not having to take those breaks. You're, being able, you're able to skate consistently over time. And even those small steps, the next thing you know, if you do that, say you have a, a year of skating without ever having to take time off, that's, you're going to have so much progress in that year compared to, a, say, a different year where there was two or three times throughout that entire year that you had to completely take off from skating because you were hurt or you had to adjust what you were doing because you were, you know, fatigued or you had aches and pains and stuff like that. That's it. And that's the key thing to, to, to bring up as well is that like when it comes down to fatigue accumulating, it's so common that we build up, like the body will never let you push yourself so much that like it's just completely destroyed, you know, once you start building up a certain amount of fatigue, it's so common that you're just going to end up getting an injury or something like that. Like, Injuries and fatigue are 100% related, and especially when it comes down to things like skating, where it's just like a dynamic kind of sport, right? Where you have to be like focused and just like your body has to be fresh to like pull off the crazy shit that we do. So yeah, having that, having that fatigue that's accumulated over time, it always, it always leads to injuries before your body is going to shut down. Like your body, that's going to be your body's way of making you stop. Uh, 100%. And I think this is even like a good time to say, because some people might be listening and be like, well, I haven't paid attention to any of this stuff and I'm getting better at skateboarding every single week. And the, the, that's 100% that's possible. There, we're not saying that you can't make progress without doing this. You will definitely yeah. be able to make progress without programming. People do it all the time. But a lot of times, if you're not paying attention to some of these variables, especially relating to fatigue, your progress is going to be slow. You're going to be battling unnecessary injuries the whole time, and you're going to be limiting what you can actually do on a skateboard. And just like I'll touch exa on exactly what you said, you put it perfectly. The body is constantly communicating with you. And if you're not paying attention to the signs of fatigue, of telling you to take a break, it's going to make you take a break on its own. It's going to, and that, the, way, the way that usually happens is an injury. And then it, now you're forced to take a break. And that's not just like, Go do some white skating and stuff. That's just like, oh, now I'm sitting on the couch. I really can't do anything. That's it. Enough. Wait for the century. You know what I mean? 100%. Man, I want to bring up a, a point, which is actually why, like, I started the daily push in the in the first place. Like, I was traveling in in South America for like a year, and I wasn't skating so much. Like, I changed a lot about my diet. Didn't know anything about about nutrition at the time or anything like this. And I got back from, from the travels where I'd been skating less, eating shit, and just got straight back into skating at like the same level that I, uh, I, I was doing before I went traveling, you know? 
and as a result i just like my body just shut down like it was just it just didn't didn't handle it at all i had like so many gnarly injuries like surgery and everything that basically kept me off my board for a year and in reality in this kind of situation a perfect way like i'm not saying that that's always going to happen you're going to have like these horrible situations but where programming could apply here is that when you have that kind of time off your board it's about like gradually increasing the intensity and the length of your session and say like 30 minute session three times a week you know next week hour session three times a week and just like gradually kind of building it up so your body is being able to recover from the the fatigue that accumulates after each session and i guess that, that's something that we maybe didn't like make so clear make too clear is that um after each session each time you skate like you are accumulating fatigue in your body and the only way that that fatigue is gonna is gonna go like is through time and by applying energy as well where however means that might be with food or or, or stuff like this so unless you unless you make sure you're giving your body those two things like time and energy like it's 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 uh uh it's just going to accumulate that fatigue and um and yeah that's that's exactly where where programming could come in 100 percent. i mean and then that's that's a huge piece and one of the massive benefits of programming is now you get to it's 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 not even like it, it's it doesn't have to even be as formal as writing stuff down or anything like that like even just bringing some awareness to the things that are going on and to and to how your body's feeling and the, and like the intensity of your sessions um you can start to just be like oh cool like i i had a heavy session yesterday and my body's feeling pretty good up today so now i know i'm gonna take it light and i know my body needs to recover from that because it was a heavier session so i'm gonna give i'm gonna you know take it light today not to say i need to take it off depending on how much fatigue like you said has accumulated um and, and how well you know your body and where you're at um but being able to do that is is super super useful in 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 scheduling your your training and your skating. Yeah, totally. And man, that's that's a, that's an interesting point you just brought up as well. The whole awareness thing is like I think that's where like so, like so many skaters just have like no awareness of like how their body feels, and I think that's why we like end up pushing ourselves so much. Like, man, I mean, I guess I guess it's it's a it's like a it's like a superpower and also like it fucks us up at the same time because i mean we like destroy ourselves so much with skating and we push ourselves through pain like so much when we're like trying to trick like you've been trying to trick for hours you just like you keep going keep going like skaters can handle pain like so much more than like the average person you know but then i think that's why as well like we don't at times give our body like the rest that it needs because we're just in that like constant mindset of just like always pushing through the pain, pushing through the pain. I mean, that like stops us from, from like listening to our body, you know? So yeah, this shit as well, it's like great for just teaching you that kind of body awareness that is essential for like that progression as well. Right. I feel like that's, that is such a good point. And that, that can't, cannot be emphasized enough. It's because it's an interesting dynamic for skateboarders. It's actually right. Like in order to do, a lot of this stuff that skateboarders do, you have to have you have to have this mentality. You have to you have to be able to push through slams and fear and a lot of a lot of the stuff that's going on in your head kind of telling you don't do it, you have to push through those things. And it's like that mentality, it's obviously like it doesn't just it's not just in your skateboarding, it's it's throughout your entire life. And so it, it's interesting that you say that because it's one hundred percent true. It makes sense that it would be difficult for like this population to really, really listen to their body because so used to just pushing through everything. And that's how, and, and like, that's a, a lot of it is a lot of their success is associated with that mentality. Yeah, exactly. So we've talked about what programming is, why programming is used, could be useful for skateboarders and, and athletes in general. And, also kind of the potential of not doing it. And a lot of skateboarders maybe listening to this are like, yep, no, I definitely can relate to what you're saying as far as accumulating fatigue and having to stop with injuries. Um, so that kind of leads us into, there are a lot of really, really simple ways to make what we're saying and the information we're giving practical. 
so that you could use it in your day-to-day -day life. Um, and so the first thing that we talked about is just gaining some insight into your, into, into your body and into your sessions and into your skateboarding. And so some of the tools that we've used is even just a session RP or a rate or a rating of perceived exertion. Um, this is, this has been used so often in athletics, even like elite level soccer is one I'll, I'll use an example of where they still are walking around with a sheet of paper at the end at, during sessions and asking players, Hey, how, on a scale of one to 10, how hard was that workout? Yeah. That From my understanding, and so that's the most like used tools across all sports and all, all athletes, right? Yeah. Okay. Cause it's, it, it. it's super easy to use because it's super simple and you can, depending on like the scale you want to use, like you could use as like a, a zero to 10 scale to rate, you know, how hard your session is zero being like, you're basically just sitting down, you're not doing anything. 10 being the hardest session you've possibly done in your life. But you could even, even for, to make it even simpler, you could even bring it down to like a zero to five. You could even take like, take it down to like a zero to three if you, if that's how you want to do it. Um, it's really just about going back to that awareness thing, like looking at your session, maybe the 10 minutes afterwards and the 10 minutes, the 10 minutes afterwards kind of gives your body like a little and your brain a little bit of like rest from the session. Like if you were trying to do it immediately afterwards, you like sometimes you have a hard session, you're like, damn, that was fucking, that session was fucking brutal. I don't know if that could have been like a nine, but then, you know, 10 minutes later after you've like taken it easy, you rest and recovery, like, all right, cool. Maybe that's, that was more like a six. And so that's yeah. what that 10 minutes is. But that, that information is, it can so basically start, like a, go ahead. It's, it's basically like a way of rating the intensity of your session, right? So, it's called it's called session RPE session rate of yep. exertion, and and yeah, basically it's this it's like Seb was saying like a scale of either like zero to five zero to ten of rating the intensity of your session, um, and it also come and you also bring in as well like the time of your session as well, don't you? So you actually multiply the two together. You multiply like the 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 time of the session by the intensity because obviously if you go for like a five minute session. Uh, at like a max effort, like nine or something like that, you know, 10, that's going to be, that's going to have a different effect on your body than if you go for like a two hour session and it's that same kind of, same kind of rating, right? hundred percent. And so that's, that's kind of why this, this type of tool is practical is your body treats different sessions in different ways. Like we talked about like heavier sessions, your body's going to need more time to recover lighter sessions. You're going to be able to just turn around and, and do those types of things again. And, the time element gives you um, a way to like classify each session because the, the time of the, the time element is important. Like you could, like you said, like even a, a nine for 10 minutes is say nine times 10, 90, but say you're doing a two hour session at, you know, a five, that's a, like a 300. And so, it's the, t the time element definitely makes a difference. And that's why you kind of, you add that in there. Um, exactly. And this is basically, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, so, so yeah, it's good then for, for this specific thing, it's good to actually like make a note of it. Um, we're going to put some, some resources as well, like in, I don't know where I'll be putting them because I don't know like where I'm going to be putting this podcast yet, but I'll put them <laughs> in the description somewhere. I'll let you know where, don't worry, you'll get there um yeah so so we're gonna put this sheet where where you can basically log this this kind of session and uh log this kind of session up here and and yeah having it basically written down is useful because obviously like yeah like like i said if you go for like a session that's two hours out of five um you multiply those two numbers together like so you'd multiply like 120 minutes by that five and it'll give you whatever that is and Whatever that answer is. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I've exposed my poor maths. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I fucked up the last one too, so that's so totally fun. <laughs> it's gonna be some uh, number like up here, but then let's say you go for a one hour session that's an eight, you know, you times that together. Even though the two hour session is actually longer, the shorter one might actually end up accumulating more fatigue. But basically it's important to like combine the combine the two to know really like how much of an effect it's having on your body. So yeah, having it written down can let you know, like get a better idea of the overall intensity of the session. 100%. And then the, the other piece that I thought of while you were talking about that is the, the real, I think, value in writing it down too is 
being able to go back and look back. So, so many, so many times, like say you're even on, on like a, you're on like a Monday session and you're trying to think you're like, damn, like, how, like what was the session like on Wednesday? You're trying to remember and you're like, I, I honestly, I could, I couldn't even tell you what I, I couldn't even tell you what I ate for breakfast the day before. Um, you can look for it. You can look for the, look at the sheet and you're like, Oh, cool. Last week around this time, I did a 75 minute session at a six RP. And so now like based on how I feel, I can kind of do that. I can go a little bit more. I can do a little bit less, you know, or and then it's, it's, you can use it now as a reference point later on to be able to see where you were and decide now with a little bit more information where you want to be. And also you can plan where you want to go. Exactly. hundred percent. And, uh, and yeah, never really useful, useful kind of, uh, way of using the session RPE as well is, is basically that you can use it to kind of like measure how fatigued you already are as well. So for example, if you go for like your, your normal session, like on whatever, like a Wednesday, whatever you go for like a skate at the park or whatever, like something like that. And, uh, for you normally that session's like a five out of 10 of intensity, but for some reason on that day, you're skating like no different, but it's an eight. That can be a sign that like, you know, when your body's struggling with that kind of same, level of skating that's a sign that you're probably carrying some kind of some kind of fatigue you know so, so yeah i know it can be like it can sound weird in the skate world like logging these kind of things and like writing down this stuff but like it's literally like one number a session right so i mean we're not asking for much here like, it might seem weird but it's not going to take so much effort and it's going to give you a lot of like useful information you know 100 percent. and then the other the other piece of it is like the benefits obviously the context that we're talking about this in the skateboarding but the benefits go far beyond that into your into your day, like your day-to-day -day life if you're if you're if you're bringing awareness to making sure that your body feels good especially as you're skateboarding a thing a, an activity that can definitely take its toll you're gonna feel good just not only skateboarding but also just like walking around in your day-to-day -day life like you're not yeah. gonna be like hitting a limp and like hitting your g-step because you're trying to like compensate for your sprained ankle or like your bum knee because you're not taking care of yourself. Like like that. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like maybe you'd like keep the G step, but maybe less of, make it more of a G step and less of a limp. Um, but yeah, it's, and like these these benefits definitely, obviously, are going to help your skateboarding, and but they also just extend to your life. You you're going to feel good. You're going to be more motivated. You're going to be more hyped for skating, and your your quality of skating stuff is. 100%. I mean, if you if you can feel good skating, which is by far like probably the most stressful thing that you do to your body, then like, man, your rest of your life, you're going to be like floating on a cloud, just G-stepping your way through. No worries. <laughs> G-stepping your way through life is the way to go. So another kind of really easy and useful tool to to apply to like check how your how your body's like responding to skating, just life in general is literally just like seeing how you're skating you know so just how is your skating is it a, like we all know how how um like the level of skating that we want to skate at right so how are you perceiving your skating are you skating worse today than you were like the day before have you been skating worse for like a few sessions in a row are you getting better like these are also signs of like how what's going on inside your body kind of thing like how much fatigue you're accumulating and for example, one aspect of like your skate performance would be like your pop. Like, is your pop going down? Because that can be a sign as well of, of the fact that you're carrying, carrying fatigue. You know, you're, the height of your pop, the height you can jump, like the power that you can generate is like really closely connected to, to the amount of fatigue that you're, that you're carrying. So yeah, if you're starting to notice like a decline in these kind of things and a decline in your skating, that's a sign that maybe you need to spend a little bit more time stepping back and like focusing on some, some recovery stuff. 100%. And the, uh, one of the things that we did a lot in athletics is we would get baseline numbers, like athletes would come in, say like the first week of training and we test their vertical jump. And that would be say like their, their max jump for that, the next, the next few weeks. And a lot of times in order to test and assess readiness before a session, so let's say you would take that same athlete and you want to know, you're like, all right, I know today's going to be a heavy session. So I want this athlete to be 
at at least, you know, 90% or 85% of their power, their max power that they expressed, you know, a couple weeks ago. And if they are perfect, we're going to go on right with that session and do it the way, the way it was planned. But say that athlete is jumping at 50% of their max and you're looking at it and the mechanics are right and everything's good and all the other variables are controlled for you. are like, wow, okay, that's definitely a sign of fatigue because the body can is producing half of the power that it's able that it was able to produce before and so like you said in skateboarding a really easy way to do that is just assessing pop and you can use like if you've got a ledge that you that you skate a lot or you've got a couple of boards that you can stack up like find out what your what your max pop is or like what a comfortable level like height for your pops are and when you say when you go to a session and you're like, all right, cool, I want to I want to find out kind of where I'm at and what kind of session I'm gonna have, set that up, see where you're at. If it, if the ledge or, or whatever you're doing is super easy, you're like, cool, my body's ready to go. Let's make this shit happen. And if you're if you can't get it, you can't even get close, and your body's just like, whoa, screaming at you, then you know that you need to, you know maybe take it a little bit easier, go a little bit lighter on that session. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I love that idea of, of just having some kind of regular obstacle that you skate and like measuring it based on that. Because then it's just like so easy to apply. You know, it's like if you've got your local spot and you've got that one thing that you always skate, start the session. You can do it. No one even needs to know that you're doing it. You're just over there, like <laughs> skating is normal. You know, but really, you're measuring your fatigue. So yeah, that's just that's the thing. Like we said, you know, we're giving you ways that you can just enhance your skating without even really making many changes you know yep and so kind of going off that pop is obviously one that is almost kind of like a performance variable um, but there are other variables that you can kind of pay attention to that will also get also give you some insight into how your body's feeling um and how everything's going number one is going to be sleep so like how, how you're sleeping are you getting quality sleep are you sleeping throughout the night are you waking up feeling rested um, or do you find it easy to get to sleep? So on and so forth. We pro we've probably heard a thousand times sleep is, is super important. Um, just basically because of the recovery aspect that like, you're not going to be adapting or getting better at skateboarding or strengthening your body while you're training, while you're training is actually breaking the body down when you're actually going to adapt and get those gains and actually, and get better at skateboarding is actually when you're resting when your body's recovering from the training that it actually did. And so sleep is going to, that, that is why sleep is so useful in kind of paying attention to is because that's a way for you to gain insight into how well is my body recovering and also how well is my body adapting uh, to what I'm giving it. That's it, because sleep is affected by fatigue, isn't it, basically? Yep, yep. And then that, like, can't even by, ex by extension, then you're, you know, say you have a shitty night's sleep, you're, your body's feeling fatigued, you wake up and this, you know, the skateboarding, this thing that you love, like you're not just like not really feeling real hype for it. That is a, another huge like telltale sign that the body's kind of ready for a rest is your motivation. Yeah, 100%, 100%. That's it, like how hyped are you for, for going on that session, you know? Um, other things as well, like mood, right? So if you've got like mood swings going up and down, maybe you're like you were hyped the day before and the next day you're like screaming at your cat or something like that you know like these are <laughs> these are signs right like all of these different things are affected by fatigue and that's it they're just like giving you insight into your body that you might not have been aware of beforehand and yeah it's also important as well that the the you don't focus on just like one of these things right because i mean just because you had like one bad night's sleep that doesn't necessarily mean that you're fatigued but then if you like Compare that, maybe your skating is getting worse as well. Maybe you have a bad night's sleep for whatever reason. You know, maybe it wasn't your night where you had bad night's sleep. But yeah, but if you combine that with like how you were skating and like the session might be like, is it taking more effort as well? And that's when you get like, that's when you can be really sure, right? When you combine the different, the different tools. Yep, I think that's a like super, super important point too, um, because it could even sound like, like you just said, like, you wake up and you're like, damn, I didn't get, I didn't get enough sleep. Am I supposed to like, am I allowed to skate today? And, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> and, it's, and it's, it's, it's not that it's, that's why I think that's super important is it is your body is affected by so many different factors. And so it is a combination of all those factors, just because you didn't have a good night's sleep 
doesn't mean that you have to now just scrap everything that you were going to try to do. Um, say you still had great meals and say you wake up and your, your body's still feeling good and, and you have great energy and your mood's good. And like, it's all, like you said, all of those factors. But if you wake up, you had a shitty night's sleep, you missed it, you didn't eat before you, before you went to bed, you're cranky. No, normally the cats probably deserve it, but you, like you said, you, you yell at your cat like, and then you get to your spot and the nor and the, like your normal ledge that you hit like with ease, you can barely get up to it. Like that's all those things were right in a row. That's going to be when like, all right, cool. I need to maybe take a, take it easier. hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. So we've touched on a lot so far. We've touched on what programming is, like how it's going to help your skating. We've touched on like different tools that you can, basically used to know like how that fatigue is accum accumulating like how ready you are for different types of different types of sessions and now we're going to go a bit into like how you can actually apply this to skating how you can like plan your sessions in a way that's going to like keep you feeling on point and keep you progressing with skating so the first one which is something that we've already like touched on throughout the podcast is something called flow programming so that's literally just basically just mixing it up based on how you feel. This is something that all skaters are doing to some extent, to some level, like having like a day of rest after like a super heavy session, for example, it's just like listening to your body, like what is it wanting on that day? Like, is it telling you to maybe just like take it chill, have like a more chilled session or even like a day off or whatever. Um, and just, yeah, adapting your like sessions based on, based on that. Yeah, this is going to be a great type of program for people who don't necessarily aren't like necessarily looking for to accelerate their progress um, in skateboarding or like reach a competitive level or anything like that. This is more for the you know, like it's like lifetime skaters, people who are just doing it like doing it uh, to feel good and have fun. This is going to be the perfect way because um, it's planning, but it's like you said, it's flow. It's just doing it based on how you feel. So you wake up in the morning. You're feeling good. You kind of consider what you've done, you know, maybe the last couple of days before that. And you, that's how you decide the session. So, you know, if you're feeling good and you've had a couple of light sessions the day before that, now, you know, all right, cool. I'm going to, I can do a, a heavier session today and, and the, and the opposite. And then, you know, for somebody who maybe, maybe wants more uh, organization and planning in their, in their programming, we, you've actually come up with, Probably the most beautiful thing I've ever seen outside of my wife, even though she probably looks at this, so it doesn't really matter. Um, it's this, it's this sheet, and it's this sheet, and it's it's a se it's a se session recovery and planning guide. And basically, what it is is it it gives you options. It, it categorizes types of sessions. It also associates a level of fatigue with those types of sessions, kind of like what we talked about, where the body's going to. Uh, treat heavier sessions with more fatigue, lighter sessions with less fatigue. Um, and this, this is kind of a guide. Downloadable as well. This is going to be in that resource pack. Will. Uh, very cool. And I, like, if you listen to this and you're, and you're looking for a really good resource, that guide is going to be one of the best resources out there right now as far as being able to really categorize your, your skating and be able to plan your week and start programming. And this is going to be for some, for people who, are maybe looking to accelerate their progress a little bit more, or just have a little bit more control over their skating and their training and how their body is feeling. That's it. So yeah, it's it's basically like split up into the different kinds of sessions, right? So we've got yep. Uh, yep. we've got like eight types of sessions. So you've got like things like a hammer sesh where you're going and you're filming like one trick at like a certain spot and maybe you're taking like a lot of slams and like it's really like you're, you're tasking it hard to like get that trick um then you got up like which would obviously be like a pretty high like fatiguing session um then you've got other kinds of sessions like more chilled ones like maybe like a line kind of session and as well on this sheet as you'll see like they they affect like different systems in your body differently and based on like which systems, systems they're affecting, you can then like, let's say you've had that super heavy session is affecting like that heavy hammer session, affecting like one system more so than others, then you can like make sure you're focusing on like an, another type of session that is targeting more of like a, that, like a different system in your body to allow the other one to, to recover. 
Um, and I think that's, this is, that's a huge, also a huge value on this sheet. And that's that I'm just going to keep talking about how great this sheet is because it, it is amazing. <laughs> once you see it, that's you'll understand what I'm talking about. The sheet. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna realize what I'm talking about when you see this. But you all also on there, which is like we he's taken Matt is taking all the thinking out of this. That hammer session, that big session, heavy session, high CNS fatigue, lots of tissue damage, also on the sheet, right in that same quickly, row. Quickly touch on what, what is what is CNS fatigue? Oh cool. And so CNS fatigue is basically it's central nervous system fatigue. And so like say we'll use we'll keep using like your heavy session. As an example, say you're taking slams, say you're trying really hard, like challenging tricks relative to yourself and you're having to really, really focus, that taxes your central nervous system and it, it requires a lot of focus and energy from that system. And so it's gonna need way more time to recover than say you go out and you're skating light rails or you're just, you're just going out and you're hanging out. That's not gonna, it's not taking your system, that CNS system to a really high level. Um, so that would be more, more like a low or a medium and you're not gonna, by association, you're not going to need as many days to recover from that session. And to just go a little bit deeper into it, that system, when it starts to get fatigued, we talk about how the body will just, if it's starting to feel those things and it's not getting the recovery it needs, it's going to start doing things to slow itself down if you're not doing it consciously. And why this CNS fatigue is such an important piece of it is because it's literally the connection between your brain and your muscles in your body. So it literally controls how hard your muscles can, can, can contract, how fast your body can move. And if you're at a level of fatigue where the CNS system is impacted, then that means that when you go out there, you're gonna literally not be able to pop with as much power as you would have if you had a fresh CNS system. And that's why it kind of goes back into why we use pop as a, as a reference point, because uh, there you go. it's a really good reference. Of CNS fatigue, and you also touched on like the same thing. It's a lot of it is also kind of common sense, but it has to. It kind of goes against that kind of like skating mentality, which is like I'm just gonna push through anything, and I'm just gonna like see what my body's got. Like even slams and stuff like that. Like if you've had a session where you've had a lot of slams, that's gonna be more like tissue damage, structural damage to so your bones, your joints, all of those things. That's like a blunt force impact. There's gonna be bruising inside that your body has to now send energy and blood to recover from. The other piece is, especially now, well, depending on what part of the world you're in, right now in Arizona, it's 100 fucking degrees every day. And when you go <laughs> in Barcelona as well. Yeah, so, and so like places so where your, it's gonna be- I don't know what your 100 degrees means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, did so like... <laughs> we, just, we did just talk about this, that, you know, obviously growing up in the US, I was taught in an outdated system of measurement that nobody understands when I talk about, but like when it's days when it's sessions where it's really hot or you're going for say a longer session or there's and even, like even taking CNS out of the, out of the equation um, where you're sweating a lot, that's going to be more of like a glycogen depletion where an energy depletion where you where your needs now, as far as recovery goes are more like nutritional. Like you want to make sure you're getting your, your carbohydrates and your, and your, good, and your good sugars in to make sure that you get your, your body back the energy um, that it needs. And so being able to kind of categorize these types of fatigue um, is going to now, like we, like we just kind of talked about, lead you into a better decision on what kind of recovery strategy or what kind of move to do next. Yeah, 100%, 100%. That's it. And that's how it all like just kind of like combines together. The, the stuff that you're recording, paying more attention to that, what these kind of sessions are, like you just, you're applying all of this like knowledge together to then make better decisions on like how you're going to skate throughout the rest of the week, how, how you can like basically take advantage of, of recovery so you can just be constantly progressing. The great value of this sheet is it also has right next to it, based on the type of session and the CNS fatigue, the central nervous system fatigue being created, how many hours or days it would ideally take for you to recover from that session. So you see a hammer sesh, it could, it starts at one day, but it could be it could take you up to five or six days to recover from a session if you've been out there for five, six hours just hammering, just getting after it. You're gonna need some you're gonna need some recovery time after that. And even in that same row, I can't believe it. Even as even as I'm looking at this, it's like I fall in love with this shit more and more every time. It even gives you the ideal next session. So based on all of that stuff, 
you can look at all the way at the end and it says, okay, based on that, if it's a heavy session now, it's going to give you some suggestions on what, what comes next, uh, just based on the science there. That's it, like based on the, the ideal session that will let those systems recover. This is like a rough guide, obviously, right? Like, I mean, skating, skating does, does affect your body in like different ways all the time. Like you've never have like a set, it's not like you go to work out in the gym and you you're just like doing a really controlled movement. Like there's a lot of different things going on. So like, it is a rough guide, but that's also where if you check down on the sheet as well, you'll see like other aspects that can, that can influence like how taxing that session has been in your body, you know? So there's, we'll put, it, we'll put this on, this is on the sheet as well, like recovery multipliers. So this is things like, literally yeah like how many slams you've been having like session rpe like was it a really taxing session for you because that's the one thing that's important to and which is why the session rpe is good as well is because like everyone responds differently to like different types of sessions so like if you go out if you've got a mate who skates stairs all the time he goes out and he skates stairs for like an hour and maybe for him like it'll be like a four intensity but maybe for you if you're not used to that like after the session you'd be like throbbing to the max and like you be maybe on like a like an eight, you know. So so yeah, we we all respond differently to different sessions. So getting in those extra things as well, like session RPE and, and stuff, can get you a, give you a better idea to to know how heavy that that session's been on your body, right? Absolutely. And we talked so we, and we, and we talked about in the beginning, like most people, yourself, myself included, even without knowing it before you even learning about any of this stuff, we're probably already doing this to some degree, some type of planning, some type of pen, like thinking, okay, I feel this way, so I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna, I have a heavy session later in the week, so I'm gonna do this. And so all this stuff is doing is just making it more efficient. It's, it's taking the guessing out of it. Before you were kind of just guessing, now you're just making it a little more formalized to the point where you don't have to guess it. That's, that's the value of it. So we've kind of talked about programming for skaters who are more, you said it like hey, casually, just want to keep skating and feel good. Skaters who maybe are looking to accelerate their progress a little bit and just maybe get a little more organization in there. We can just even, even try it out just to see, see what happens if there's any changes. And then there's also going to be skaters because we kept, this, is, this is something that we've talked about that I think is really cool is when I, when I grew up and I was paying attention to skateboarding and, and getting inspired by skateboarders, it was all skating videos. It was all skateboarding parts. I didn't watch, even though competitions were happening, I wasn't really paying attention to it because that just, it just wasn't in my, kind of in my view. So, but yeah, now you fast forward. It's a thing, really. Ex and exactly, and you, but, you, but you, but you fast like, forward to now. Sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just gonna say the comps okay. are so much more like chilling and like fun kind of based as opposed to now it's like a bit more like serious, right? Like street league and, and stuff like that. 100%, exactly. And so like now you kind of, and like those still, those still like, skating for street parks and skating to just, you know, just, just to have fun and stuff like that still exists. But now I feel like almost a new kind of branch of skateboarding has started to start to develop relating to like competitive skateboarding. Now you can see like skating for the first time in the Olympics. Like it, there's definitely now a more athletic side of it. And there are going to be people out there that that is what that like, that's sounds really cool to them. And they want, and they want to take skateboarding to like the, the highest competitive level they can. And yeah. so that this stuff is also going to be really useful for those type of people because the name of the game for them is going to be development and what they call like progressive overload, being able to like give your body more load over time and condition it to be able to handle more training so that you can get basically accelerate your growth quicker um, over that period of time for the competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even and even as well, not just for not just for competitions, but let's say as well, like if you're someone that wants to take it take it serious and you just skate straight, for example, but you want to like focus on increasing your pop or like you know just your just your energy levels or whatever, you can still use different types of programming like progressive overload, adding like a little bit each each time, progressively building it up, building on top of that, letting your body recover from it, growing back stronger, building on a little bit, and always just like pushing it a little bit more. Yep, and to give it like to give an example of that and why like planning can be so useful as saying, say you, you do want, you're like, I'm, I've been skating in the streets, I've been doing this stuff and I really want to increase my pop. Like I really want to just get, like get it higher. And so let's say for six weeks now, you're like, all right, cool. For the next six weeks, I'm going to really focus on increasing my pop. And, and then you look at your weeks and you're like, all right, cool. Every 
Saturday, I'm going to do a session where I'm just, I'm just fucking hammering. And like, I'm just like, work, like working on getting tricks that involve a lot of pop. And now, you know, okay, every, every Saturday for the next six weeks, I'm going to be doing that. And you can start planning your weeks to progressively get harder and harder and harder. So say you're like, you're working on a ledge that's a certain high week one. Your goal would be to week two, maybe get that a little bit higher or do a trick that's a little bit more challenging that involves a little more like focus and coordination. The next thing you know, six weeks later, you've accomplished the goal that you wanted because you you stood it out and you were specific about it. And just by a little bit of planning, you've now set yourself up for success to actually get what you wanted out of it. Yeah. I like the interesting thing that I just realized now is like that this is actually like what skating is always about. It's always about just like progressing <laughs> little by little, no? Like like you don't you don't go from just like learning to push to then like tray flipping down a ten stair, do you? Like it's always about just like <laughs> Little, little progressing, little bit of progression, though, on top of each other. So there's another way that, like, we are programming already without even thinking about it, really. So one other thing, when it comes down to when it comes down to programming in in skating, it's not just about like just the skating sessions, you know. Like the rest of your of your life also influences like how fatigue accumulates. A little bit like what we were mentioning above as well, like you know, lack of lack of sleep and stuff like that. But not only is lack of sleep gonna can be a sign sometimes that you're that you're under recovered, but that lack of sleep can also build up more stress and have that kind of like opposite effect, that like accumulative effect. So all the rest of your life is also affecting fatigue. So that can be yeah, sleep. Maybe if you work like construction, for example, you know that's gonna be like accumulating fatigue if you're like a waiter or whatever. Like mental stress as well. If you have like back to the cat, maybe you have an argument with your cat, you super <laughs> Like this as well is gonna is gonna accumulate like build like uh, contribute to fatigue and like all of these different areas of your life are kind of things that you need to think about as well in terms of like how how fatigued you might be and then like how you should go about skating because even though at times like skating obviously is like a stress relief in like so many so many ways like man I've used skating so many times when I've had like I've been depressed or whatever like I've gone for a session and it's like help me out but. On those times that maybe you're like accumulating a lot of stress in other areas of your life, it might be a better idea to think like, okay, maybe I should have like a more of a chip session because like a heavier session added on top of that stress that's here is just gonna be a bombastic overload of, of stress, right? Yep. And another great point. It we talked about the sheet, and a lot of that sheet is like you said tracking and paying attention to things that are relating to like skateboarding and performance and stuff like that but your body is affected by so many different factors and stress is stress so like the stress from skateboarding is going to be treated the same way as the stress from fighting with your you know with your cat and so paying attention to all of those things <laughs> pay attention to all of those things and uh, okay, listen. We need to phone like that's, the, that's, the, that's that's usually deserve. Well, but like we need to phone like the animal services and get some help for this cat, man. Like. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely they, listen. Most of the time, they probably deserve it. Uh, but yeah, so like, like it's super important to be paying attention because um, even because having the sheet is great, but also taking into consideration those things that you are affected by things other than what's on that sheet. And say you have sat out and you planned your week and you're like, oh, cool. On Thursday, I'm going to have a, uh, a, uh, an eight session and it's going to be heavy, it's gonna be heavy as shit and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get after it. But on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you didn't sleep. You fought with your cat. You got half the meals that you thought you were, that you were supposed to have. And you found out you're failing your classes. Damn, what a week. Fuck, man. <laughs> then probably you're gonna you have to adjust that plan because of all of those other factors and so that's why total load is so important is the sheet is there to plan but you also have to t take into consideration the other lifestyle effects uh, on your body yeah totally totally um so so yeah to finish things off we've made a little example of a week programming like a week program that you can basically apply to your skating this is pretty much based on the idea of having like a super heavy session on Saturday where you're going to be maybe like out in the streets, 
like filming filming all day in the streets or whatever. Uh, this is also going to be available in that in that sheet in the in the resources. So yeah, this this weekly plan that we're going to go over a little bit now is pretty much preparing you for that like super heavy Saturday mission. So you're going to be like on point, stacking clips. Yeah, so plan, I'm playing, playing the week, and I'm glad you, we talked about it in the beginning. I'm glad you talked about the Saturday session. Is this is like probably the, the best? There's so many benefits to doing this, but probably the best benefit is that you get to do what you want to do when you want to do it. So when you look at your week and you're like, okay, I want to, I, there's two sessions this week that I really want to have, and both of them are going to be heavy, and I know exactly what's going to happen. Now you should say that's on, on like a Saturday or on a, on a, on a Monday. Now you can plan the rest of your week around those things so you can still get the most out of those sessions. And you know that, say, when you wake up on Tuesday, that you're going to have a light session instead of, like, thinking in your head, well, all my friends are doing heavy sessions. Um, you already know before you even get there that, okay, I'm, I'm going to do some light today because I had some heavy before. As well, I want to say, like, this, this program, we've done it. So you could, if you want, you could skate, like, every single day if you wanted to. Like... I want to say personally for me, like I don't do that. Like I like to have days where like I actually do rest. Um, I like give my body like, you know, time off from skating. But if you want to skate like all, all day, every day, like this is, this, is, uh, this is gonna allow you to do that. So yeah, Saturday mission, big heavy, heavy street mission. The next day is Sunday. This is gonna be, you can just go for like a light session. Um, We've, we've also as well on this program, we've put like the numbers of like each of the kind of session styles that we talked about earlier as well. So like, for example, Sunday is like a five, right? So you go then go and you look at the sheet and you're like, okay, that's like a chilled session, skating flat, low, RPE, remember what we talked about earlier. And um, yeah, just the kind of session that's going to allow your body to recover a little bit from that, that Saturday session. And yeah, so and I'll even like cut in here real quick and like, that's a huge piece of why this like uh, sheet is super useful. Is it gives you examples like we talked about the like the categories of, of sessions and how they affect your C and your nervous system and just your body in general. And so when you see that Saturday, it gives you you know like a one, which is a hammer session, with high high fatigue, or a three. It gives you all, it gives you all examples. And so it, the idea here is to take a lot of the thinking out of it, like so much of this information, this is a lot of information and this is a lot of probably new information. Um, and so we want to, we want to give you resources that take a lot of the thinking out of it. So you could just look at it, know what day you're on, mm -hmm. know what type of session you're going to do. And then boom, all you have, all this left to do is just get out there and skate. That's it. That's it. So going on what we've got, we've got then from Monday to Thursday, uh, Monday to Friday, at least like this is, almost preparing for that Saturday. I don't, I don't want to say it's totally preparing for the Saturday, but it is like leading up to that Saturday session. So, um, so yeah, the, mon the Monday and the Wednesday session, we put in there that you can like pretty much anything, right? So you can have any kind of, any kind of session that, you, that you'd like, really like, if you want to go heavy, you can go heavy, whatever. Um, and then on those Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're going to be like having more of a, more of a lighter session to basically just allow yourself to recover from, from those Mondays and Wednesdays. And then the Friday is going to be a similar thing. So you can go light, like medium kind of style session. Or if you want to, for example, if you're going to go film like a specific trick on Saturday, like the Friday, if you want to do like some kind of hammer, like if you, if you want to like skate some stairs, like at your park or whatever, or like a handrail at your park with like a trick that you know you've got unlocked, that isn't going to cause you a lot of like fatigue. You're not going to slam too hard. Then you can just like go and, and, and blast that on Friday, like practice that trick and, and have, it, have it ready for... For Saturday as well, right? Yep, and this is, it's, I think it's important to note that like this, this is an example and the example is based off of, like you said, that, that Saturday session. And so everything is kind of based off of that. Number one, like you said, prepping your body the, the first, you know, the, in the days leading up to it, but then also giving yourself enough recovery time afterwards. So say you get to that Monday session, and you're still like you just fucking went after it on Saturday, and you're still kind of feeling beat up. Like that's a that's a great way to kind of use more of like a flow programming and lighten that session up, so that Tuesday you can. And but not, and in that scenario, then Tuesday would maybe could even be maybe then your one of your medium days, um, and everything adjusts from that. But 
you want to, yeah. what I found, the, the, the easiest way to do this is put in the days that you know you want and then build everything out based on that. Yeah, totally. That's sick. And yeah, I think that's super important as well. What, what you just said, like about being able to adjust it, like no matter what kind of like program you have, even if you've got like the most high tech program that you've like spent years working on, like even then, you know, you need to, you need to have, be able to have that flexibility and go based on how your body's feeling. Like what is like, how are you skating the results from those tools that we mentioned earlier and adapt things based on that as well. Right. So yeah, so we talked, we talked about programming and skateboarding and a lot and recovery. Um, and putting those types of things in your week, but we haven't really touched on training and like actually exercising and like lifting weights, so to say. Um, and coming coming from my background, like I've seen firsthand the benefits and the uses of it. And a lot of times, when skateboarders here working out and training, they're like, it's instantly a turnoff. Um, but you have to, as a skateboarder, you have to realize what you're asking your body to do. You you are an athlete. And you're, the things that you're doing, yeah, especially yeah, no, if like, you're skating. No, 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 not an athlete. Exactly. Trigger word. The, the, things, <laughs> the things that you're asking your body to do on a daily basis, are, like some of it can be the, like when you take some of those heavy slams, like that could be the equivalent of like taking a hard rugby hit. And look at, look at rugby players. Those dudes are fucking massive. They're huge. They're so strong. And it's because, they need that they need that muscle mass to be able to protect their body from the impacts that they're going to get and to be able to get strong and to be able to perform better when they're when they're on the pitch the same thing happens with skateboarding the the value in training your body and getting it stronger with whatever means it is whether it's bands or kettlebells or body weight is making it more resilient for the skating that you're actually doing so if your body's if you have a really strong body when you go out and skate, and you go out and skate and have a heavy session, that's going to register way less than somebody who's super deconditioned that does the exact same session. That to them is going to feel really, really heavy, and their body's going to need a lot of time to recover. But if you have a strong, conditioned body, then you're going to be able to go longer and recover faster. And that's that's what we're kind of looking for here. Like increasing your threshold of what you can what you can handle. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And that's that's going to drive progression, but it's also just going to drive that your quality of, and your comfort even just during your skating and throughout throughout your career. And so just to quickly touch on like programming wise where that might fit in would be like using our example on the sheet. So like a Saturday heavy street session, say you gave yourself like 48 hours before you did some type of like resistance training. And especially for people who are going to be new to this, if you're going to start working out, that's going to, your body's going to treat that as a high stress thing because it's not, it's, it's completely new to it. It's a novel, it's a novel thing, activity. And so you want to make sure you're giving yourself enough recovery time and also you're doing it far enough out from something heavy that it's not affecting it. So on our schedule, a Saturday heavy session, and then you could train and you know, do it like a light skate on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so that gives you enough time to recover. Um, from the heavy sessions, but it also gives you enough time to recover from the training sessions. And so you do it's the definitely something on the, on the Tuesday and Thursday, right? Yep, yep. And I think it's something that, you know, skateboarders should definitely start to consider as a means of feeling better, skating better, and skating longer. Yeah, 100%. And, uh, and we're going to do, we're going to cover like more podcasts relate, going deeper into like things related to exercising and and all these kind of different things, we're probably going to expand more even on programming and all this kind of stuff as well, right? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So this, yeah. the, idea here, the idea here was introduce programming, kind of introduce ourselves, like what, what we're kind of trying to do here um, yeah. and give some, at least some, leave, leave with some practical information on how to apply this stuff to skateboarding so that you could see some differences right off the bat in your life. Yeah, totally. Totally. So, yeah, so I'm pretty much summarizing it all. It's just like planning how you're going to skate with like intelligence based on like how your body's been responding to the other sessions. Then you can use that, use that knowledge, use those observations to plan those future sessions so you can make sure you're recovered and just always be skating, progressing constantly and skating each session as on point as you, as you could, right? Yep. And realizing that most, most skateboarders, most people are already doing this type of stuff. 
probably in an unconscious way, in a less formal way. And this is, these are just tools to kind of help you formalize that and get more out of it. And it can be used for anybody, whether you're just skating for quality of life, whether you are skating to accelerate your progression or you're skating to literally be the best skateboarder on the planet. These types of uh, tools can, can apply to any of those scenarios. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, I guess that's it. Huh? Podcast number one complete. Boom. Yeah. All right. So, so that is podcast number one done. Uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be trying to do these maybe like once every couple of weeks, something like that. And we're yeah, like I said at the start, covering loads of different topics related to everything that's just gonna enhance how you skate, how you feel when you skate. Um, and this, all those, all the things that we've been talking about in the podcast, like the sheet, all those resources, go to www.thedailypush.com and I'll put them there somewhere. I'll figure out like for the next episodes, I'll figure out like a more kind of solid place to be putting them and where we can, we can definitely direct you. But yeah, if you want to check out as well, thedailypush.com, there's loads of, uh, loads of other stuff that we're going to be talking about in future episodes that I've, that I've covered before related, like working out for skating nutrition for skating there's lots of different videos on there already that are, that are available and yeah as well instagram for the daily push is the dot daily dot push and uh, and seb where can people find you as well so you can find me on the gram um it's gonna be sebastian underscore performance look for a potential name change in the in the near future um, I'll, put, I'll put these all as well like in the description of these links but I'll leave, but we'll leave that for now. And yeah, but mo like mostly daily push, dailypush.com and the daily push on Instagram. This is like, I get so excited. I get so excited about this, man. It is such a great resource. It's gonna, it's only going to grow if you're a skateboarder who's looking to just learn more about how you can take more, better care of your body and skate better. This is it. This is the website. This is the resource. It's happening right now, man. It's an awesome stuff. Awesome. Get that piece of awesome tool. I'm really, really excited about it. Yes, man. I was searching. I was searching for this guy for so long. Like I've been saying for so long. Like I need to find someone who's a, like who's as hyped on skating and the health and performance side of things. And then this guy walked into my life. You know. Yeah. Two peas in a pod right here. Skateboarding and performance. The perfect marriage. The perfect relationship. This is what you need in your life. This is what we got for you. <laughs> All right. There we go. Thanks to everyone that made it this far, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, everybody. Peace.